The Daily Mail. Evangelical Christian family begs Biden administration to stop their deportation back to Germany, where it's illegal to homeschool their kids while millions pour across open U.S. border. I saw this uh, pop up more than a week ago now on Tim Pool's channel, and I wanted to say something about it because I will tell you all in this video how to solve the border crisis uh, between U.S. and Mexico. It, it's actually very, very simple things to do, and, I, and I'm going to lay out my several point plan here at the end of the video and be sure to stick around for the palate cleanser. Now, if you noticed the last video I put up, uh, the one about the men crashing the woman's only job fair, I took that down. I didn't like that video. I thought it was really cringy. And then um, after it had been up for a day, a little bit more than a day, YouTube notified me of a copyright claim on it. And so I just took it down. If you liked that video, apologize. Maybe you want to see it again. We all know that uh, men are allowed to attend any job fair in the country because you cannot limit a person's access to employment based on their um, immutable characteristics. In Saturn News, I did receive a copyright strike on my channel for the John Oliver video I put out a few weeks ago. And I might receive more because I've put up other videos that were critical analysis of videos and movies and stuff. So I don't know if they're going to retroactively go after any of my other videos or not. So my channel might get taken down. So be sure you go through and watch as many of my videos as you can, especially the Star Wars ones. Farce Awakens ruins Star Wars because that one lays out a lot of stuff using that movie. So now I want to get into this article and discuss the border crisis which is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about, but uh, I rarely talk about it on this channel. I don't want this to be the, the U.S.-Mexico border crisis channel. Uh, before we get started, I do want to thank everybody for stopping by and supporting my work. I do appreciate you all. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure that you're still subscribed because YouTube does unsubscribe people every single day. You can find me over on Rumble and on Twitter. Now let's get into this article here. Uwe and Hanalore. Ramaika fled Germany in 2008 after being fined $9,000. Lawyers representing the family of seven say they have a right to stay. The Supreme Court previously revoked Ramaika's asylum status in 2014. Okay, so they have been revoked asylum status. But how does this compare to what we're seeing at the southern border? The southern border, of course, is people coming here from all over the world. Probably 90% of the countries are sending people or having people, 90% of the countries that are not in the Western world, are having people flood across the southern border. And these people are getting privileges that I don't get as a natural born citizen here. So come on, ridiculous. But people voted for this. <laughs> why, would you, why would you want to vote for an invasion of your own country? People don't have this, this global understanding that like if you bring everyone here, then you will not have a high standard of living anymore. We cannot have 5 billion people living in the United States. Life would be miserable here. I would definitely leave if that were the case. And I think most pretty much everybody else in the country who's in the country now, at least natural born citizens in the country now would leave. A Christian family is begging the Biden administration to intervene in their upcoming deportation after living in the U.S. for 15 years seeking asylum from a persecution in Germany. Uwe and Hanalore Ramaika fled Germany in 2008 after being threatened with prosecution for homeschooling their five children. Homeschooling in Germany is only allowed in very limited circumstances, and the family was facing a $9,000 fine, so they moved to East Tennessee and filed for asylum. Authorities denied their claim in 2013, with the family attempting to appeal the decision after the Obama administration challenged the initial ruling that was approved. They do not have citizenship in the U.S. Well, yeah, we know that. They're, they're German. <laughs> Actually, some of them do have citizenship in the U.S. Why? Because, hey, they were born here. They have been able to live in the U.S. for the last 10 years under an indefinite deferred action status, but we're told earlier this month they must return to Germany. Their bid comes as millions of asylum seekers are pouring into the U.S. near the Texas border. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look here at this video. In 2008, a family fled from Germany to Tennessee after they were fined for homeschooling their kids. Five years later, their asylum claim was denied, claiming they weren't persecuted but they were told their stay was indefinite. Now, after 15 years of making the United States their beloved home, they are facing deportation. Uva and Hanalore Ramke join us along with Kevin Bowden, an attorney. Thank you all for being here. Uva, let me start with you. You claimed asylum because homeschooling is illegal in Germany, correct? And you've been homeschooling here in the United States ever since. That's correct, yes. And we were actually granted asylum first by the immigration judge here in the United States. 
you and and Hanalore, you made home in in Tennessee. You've thrown roots down there. So, so Kevin, help me out here. Um, we're seeing record numbers of illegals race across our southern border, most of which are loosely claiming some sort of a need for asylum. Yet your clients clearly, because of their beliefs, want to homeschool in a country that allows it, and Germany does not. Square that circle for me. Well, thanks, B. Thanks for having me. What I can say is the Romica family has entered the country lawfully. They've been here lawfully for 15 years. Yes. They want to stay here lawfully, and there's a way to make that happen. So this is not a case other than a family following the rule of law and wanting to continue to follow, follow the rule of law to stay here. And so uh, the Biden administration can make that happen. The agencies can make it happen. And we're asking them to simply do just that. Uva, why you guys? Why were you chosen for deportation at this point? What are they telling you? Well, the thing is, they did not tell us anything. We wonder that ourselves because we cannot understand. So, so homeschooling is totally illegal in Germany? You can't do it? Yes, it is illegal. It is illegal. Uh, how does that not qualify as asylum claim, Kevin, as their attorney? I mean, how, how can you fight this at this point? Well, you know, the, the original immigration judge did find that it was, you know, there was a proper asylum claim. They found that the Romica family did have a well-founded fear of persecution based on their, you know, participation in a particular social category, that being homeschoolers. You know, the Obama administration appealed that uh, to the Board of Immigration Appeals. Uh, that appeal court agreed with them, as did the Sixth Circuit and the Supreme Court tonight. So, you know, we agree with you. We think this is, in fact, uh, an asylum case. We do think they have a well-founded fear. As we testified, you know, our organization testified to that back um, when this was ongoing before the trial court. All right, so there's enough of that. Here they are. This is a... Uh... The family, I'm sure this is like the family with uh, significant others. This guy looks like he's an American, whereas this guy definitely looks like he's a German. So I'm assuming that not all of these are their children. Now, these two youngest daughters here apparently were born in the United States. We know that the migrants, the migrants in uh, coming across the southern border are economic migrants almost exclusively, that they're not seeking, they're not seeking asylum, and they travel through several countries typically to get to the United States where they could easily just set up camp in one of those other countries and then be safe from the persecution that they're they're experiencing in their home country if there was actually any persecution. But I can only imagine that the Biden administration wants to get rid of these people. Well, he, this probably is the whole family right here. It looks like she's pregnant, so she can have another child soon. This family here, why? Well, because they come from a wealthy first world country. Germany is one of the wealthiest countries in Europe. They're white. Of course, we can't have that. No, <laughs> This is, this is clearly a war on white people because you never hear about how China needs to be more diverse. You never hear about how Zimbabwe needs to be more diverse. You never hear about how Panama needs to be more diverse. You never hear about any of these other countries that are not considered white countries need to be more diverse. And yet what is happening as we increase diversity in the United States? I mean, you do the math. Targets, nine targets are going to close. The general store, the most important resource in the economy probably as far as you know, a, a shop is concerned. Closing nine, nine locations. Hmm. And it's because we are well enriched by people who, you know, they, they have different cultural values than, than the Europeans do. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that's just, that's just the fact of it. And they also, they're also Christian, which does not help. But of course, a lot of the people flooding the southern border are Christian as well, and very traditional Christian values. But they have other beliefs too. I mean, you know, they they want to bring in people of all different faiths, of course. We have to have diversity in the country because diversity is our strength. You know, every time that I forge a sword, which, of course, I've never done because I'm not a blacksmith, but if I were a blacksmith and I were to forge a sword, I would want to make sure there were plenty of tin in that. Tin, maybe some aluminum, some copper, toss all that in there. Maybe some bronze, too, along with this, this steel. Put all that together because that's going to make uh, the sword stronger. Mm -hmm. In their initial argument, the family claimed that God was calling them to homeschool their five children, claiming that the anti-Christian message in German schools was also a factor, okay? The couple are now begging the Biden administration to intervene in the decision after they were told to obtain German passports on September 6th. During a routine check-in, the family were told their deferred status had been revoked and were given four weeks to apply for German passports. Wow, that's not a very long time. Speaking to Fox & Friends, Uwe said, they did not tell us anything. We don't really know why. We wonder ourselves because we can't understand. I just told you why you're being deported. It's because you're white and you come from a first world country. His wife added that the laws haven't changed in Germany, so they would still face the same persecution. The family was reportedly not giving any prior, I think it's supposed to be not given, any prior warning or explanation other than there had been a change of orders. In a legal brief in 2014, the Justice Department wrote the goal in Germany is for an open, pluralistic society teaching tolerance to children of all backgrounds helps to develop the ability to interact as a fully 
functioning citizen in Germany. You know, having a pluralistic society actually makes you less tolerant in my experience. I remember, look at the, the issues that are coming along with this mass immigration of people who are not white into the country. And it sounds like a very racist thing to say, but that's the whole point is people are always pointing to the problems that are being caused by this group of people that isn't white or that group of people that is white. There is this friction between the racial groups. It's, it's really obvious. It's really easy to point to another person and say, he looks different from me. He belongs to this group and that group is bad. It's very easy to do that. And white people do it too. Non-whites, non-whites do it to white people. Non-whites do it to other groups. I, I lived with a with enough Hispanic people out here in California, hear them talk about black people. Wow. You think that white people are racist against black people? Whoa. Don't even get me started on the Hispanic people and the way they talk about them. So yeah, there's there's racism all different directions. And so th if you have this pluralistic society, people are always going to be pointing to, hey, look, they're causing the problem. Hey, look, that group over there is causing the problem. This group here is causing the problem. We're the ones causing the problem and we're proud of it. I mean, do you think that all of these smash and grab robberies that are happening across the country, do you think that those people are going, pfft, I'm, I'm so ashamed that my group of people is causing this problem. No, they're like proud of it. Why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they be? Kevin Bowden, an attorney representing the family, said they found that the Romica family did have a well-founded fear of persecution based on their participation in a particular social category, that being homeschoolers. Well, there you go. Germany doesn't allow homeschooling, then you know they should probably be here. And here we go. We got a legal boarding cro border crossings video. Let's take a look at that. The border agent is cutting the razor wire to allow these people into the country. These people should be arrested and imprisoned. This is treason. They're committing treason to allow people that are clearly not seeking asylum. I mean, these are young women. They might be, but I doubt it. Where are the men in this case? They all have children. There's only single mothers. This is what we need. We're burning. Oh, there's a, there's a child that's alone. Oh, there's a mom. People bring these children on this trip, endangering their lives. Here we go. Here's the young men. Look at all these young men. They're all healthy, able to walk on two legs. What are they? What are they running from? They're not running from anything. We know this. This guy has a Duff shirt on. <laughs> That's not American. There's a Nike shirt, Duff shirt, another Nike shirt. They're not American. I don't. These people. They already have. They already know what they're getting when they come here, because they've already seen. They've already had a taste of it in their home country. And th these guys are not even thin. Look, some of these guys are overweight. Oh, here's another one crossing the border at dusk, it looks like. Maybe it's in the morning, but I think it's dusk. Being let in by Border Patrol, crossing the Rio Grande. Ridiculous. All these, these hundreds of people standing here. And this is just a tiny drop in the bucket. Anyway, <clears throat> disgusting. The Obama administration appealed that to the Board of Immigration Appeals that appeal court agreed with them, as did Sixth Circuit and the Supreme Court denied it. We think this is, in fact, an asylum case. We do think they have a well-founded fear as we testified. I can tell you today, I talked to families today that have fear in Germany and they fight their the persecution there is very real today as it was 15 years ago. The Homeschool Legal Defense Association said in a statement in the 10 years that the Ramaikas have lived peacefully in the United States, they've built a second life. They have two children who are American citizens and two other children who married American citizens. <laughs> One of these couples recently welcomed their first child. So I don't know what to tell you. These people have integrated. So what's going to happen is this is what I would do if if you had to go back. OK, it's very simple. The the uh, children who are married, they just they probably already have green cards, but they could if they don't, they could apply for green cards. It's pretty easy to get them. And then the children who are citizens here could just stay with those adult family members who are their brothers and sisters or whatever. And um, there's four out of the six people in the family or something. I, I think there's six, six children. So four out of the eight people, half of them are already here. 
And you think they're just not going to apply for residency or citizenship? The others, they could probably could at that point. Deportation to Germany will fracture these families while exposing the Romaikas to renewed persecution in Germany, where homeschooling is still illegal in almost every case. But there is still hope. The United States executive branch intervened once before to grant the Romaikas a respite, and it has the power to do it again. And here we go. We have people bringing their children in over some sort of shipping container. But... Uh, this is not a row of shipping containers. I don't know why they don't walk around it. They're just lifting up this baby who could easily be dropped and then die because it's a fragile little baby. But they don't care. They're willing to take the risk just so they can make a couple bucks. Here they are. So this is the mother and father, and then they have what appears to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children now. So maybe one of these is not one of their children. These two guys on the end, definitely German. They're definitely <laughs> their father's children. But I don't know, maybe the guy in the middle is, but he looks German too. So they all look like they're German to me pretty much. So yeah, here's more border cross, more illegal border crossings, millions. We know that there's millions coming. Here they are. Look, look at these, these people coming across, sending their children to crawl through razor wire. Yes, just what we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So we're almost done with the article. After moving to the U.S., the couple had two more children, Sarah, 12, and Rebecca, 10, who were born in America. Their other five children... Daniel, 27, Lydia, 25, Joshua, 23, Christian, 21, and Damaris, 18, were born in Germany but are facing deportation. Daniel and Lydia both married, so there you go, their oldest two are married, American citizens with the entire family previously living in, okay, this is German, so it's been a while since I studied my, in my German, Bissingen, Baden-Württemberg, wherever that is, somewhere in Germany, uh, dailymail.com has contacted the Department of Homeland Security which did not respond in time for this. Why do they have copy editors on these things? I don't understand, whatever. The family's plea to help comes as record-breaking numbers of migrants from Latin America, Africa, and beyond are crossing the U.S. to Mexico border by foot and train. In Eagle Pass, Texas, the city's Democratic mayor has declared a state of emergency where last week it's thought that 100,000 people waded through the Rio Grande. The police officer in Eagle Pass told the Daily Mail, We have a crisis. I don't care what the federal government says. Officials have long said that the influx of migrants crossing the border illegally is directly linked to multi-billion dollar human trafficking schemes run by notorious violent Mexican drug cartels and George Soros, Soros BlackRock, all those things. It's, it's just it's a, a money-making scheme is what it seems like. I don't know. Around 2 million migrants are thought to have crossed the U.S. southern border in 2023, with many citing Biden's lax policies as a reason another 500,000 could cross by the end of the year, probably like a million. Recent U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced that 800 more military servicemen and women would be sent to the border to aid the crisis, joining the more than 2,500 National Guardsmen who are already present. That This number here, 2,500 National Guardsmen, needs to be multiplied by a factor of 20, probably. We have to militarize the border, really, is what it comes to. We have comments? Yeah, we do. We have enough homegrown religious right-wing fanatics. We do not need Germany's evang evangelicals. Of course, you knew that was going to come. But 253 people have downvoted it compared to 111 who've upvoted it. Look, I am not... A Christian. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Jewish person. I'm not a Hindu, a Sikh, uh, Hare Krishna. Are you noticing a pattern here? But the law is that if you're if you're experiencing religious persecution in your home country, you can come here and seek asylum. Okay, that's what these people are doing. They did it the legal way, unlike the people crossing the southern border illegally. And uh, the people crossing the southern border illegally are given all sorts of benefits and shipped throughout the entire country. So it's going to be harder to deport them. Good luck with that. You're asking someone who is is the antithesis of being Christian. Okay, look. So so what this guy is saying, he, he's the, he, he doesn't want these people coming in here because he's the antithesis of being Christian. Well, then you want to deport, what, 85% of the country? At least, the, it's at least 55% of the country. And we know it's way more than that are, consider themselves Christian in this country. So you're just going to just get, get rid of them. It's fine. <laughs> you idiot. Like I said, I'm none of these things. And they have the right to be here because that's what the law says. We have quite enough evangelicals, again, downvoted more than it's upvoted. Um, that's odd. They broke German law and are criminals, but want a democratic president they do not like to protect them 
from the crime by illogically comparing themselves to people wholly different in a wholly different situation to themselves. LOL, tall about entitled. Um, yeah, and then somebody wrote back, are you okay? Yeah, because this guy does it's not make any sense here. And then this guy says, what, why does it ma matter what religion they are? That's exactly my point. The law says, hey, if you're, if you're experiencing religious persecution in your home country, you can come here and you'll be free to you know, re uh, practice your religion. So they've been here illegally since 2014, SCOTUS ruling. Where's the MAGA outrage? Okay, well, if they've been here illegally, then they should be shipped out. You're right. I didn't get that from the, uh, the article. I got that they're like living in limbo. If they have been here illegally, yeah, get them out. Ship them out. Religious people always make exceptions themselves. Okay, that doesn't make any sense because you don't know how to speak English or write English, whatever. Uh, I don't think that English is your second language, but I'm thinking you're just an idiot. That's why you don't know how to speak English correctly, which is typical of what I find of these people who are against um, MAGA, etc. But uh, anyway, the, the woke people, they're, they don't know how to speak English. But um, you think that the people crossing the southern border are not religious? They're all, they're all heathens. They're all atheists, right? Yep, that's how it is. Idiots. All right, so let's tackle the southern border problem. We need to send the military to the border, okay? That's obviously job one. Tanks, guns, all that stuff need to be there. And we need to be authorized to use uh, the long-range tools that the military is known for. And before you say, oh, that's illegal, we can't do that, it's a human rights violation, I don't care, change the law. What else? I mean, you want to stop this problem, that would, that would end it tomorrow if that were the case. And maybe they just need to be used to give warnings. That would be enough. Okay. Uh, as soon as I heard that um, the border agents were whipping the poor illegal immigrants, and there was a big uproar about that, as you all, of course, remember, all border agents would be equipped with bull whips and um, required to use them. And they would be severely punished if they did not meet their quota of use of the bull whips, up to and including termination. Okay. Any border agent caught aiding and abetting migrants across the border, immediate termination and imprisonment. There are beacons, as I understand, there are beacons in the desert where um, if, a, if a, an illegal comes across this beacon, they can push the button and it'll send a call to the nearest guard post to send out a truck to pick them up. Those need to be eliminated right away. If you're going to come here and take the risk, that's on you. We're not going to help you get here. I'm not, why, why are we helping people get here? It makes absolutely no sense. I know you don't want to see these people die and suffer. Stay at home. And I know you're suffering at home. I get it. Kick rocks. We got enough problems here as it is. We don't need more. And we're just adding more. Adding more and more and more and more and more. Adding more fuel to the fire. Okay. Arrest and deport all illegals. If, if you cross the border illegally, arrest, deportation, that's it. Cut off all interaction with every country south of the border in North and South America, with the exception of Panama, of course. So no um, economic activity, no tourism. You can't go there as a tourist. Tourists can't come here. That eliminates the whole, I'm going to come here by plane. I'm going to come here by boat issue. And now you're probably saying, you're probably saying, oh, wait, but the, our economics, our economic system, we, we do more trade with Mexico than any other country. We'll survive. Trust me. We're going to get through it. We're going to find a way. That's what America does. Okay. Oh my gosh. You might not get your av avocados. I don't care about your damn avocados. Avocados don't even taste good. So what are you bitching about? Learn to eat good food. Now that would seriously impact me because I do like me the chocolate and uh, it wouldn't, be, wouldn't be getting too much of that anymore. That would jack the price way up. You're talking like hundred dollars a pound of chocolate, probably, probably even more. $300, $400 a pound, probably. But, you know, I'll survive through it. I'll get through it somehow. I will suffer and, and manage. So I'm willing to make these sacrifices that we have to make to secure this country and keep the um, invaders out because this is an invasion. In addition, I'm not saying that I like any of these ideas that I'm presenting here. I'm just saying that they would work to solve the problem. All right. So now moving on to the last and uh, biggest talking point, which is the wall. Biden, uh, I guess, flip-flopped on this now. He said, it was not, not another foot of wall, right? Not another foot of wall. In fact, he's been tearing the wall down. But he's going to add another 20 miles, 20 miles. Mm, hey, man, that's going to keep a lot of people out, right? The border between the U.S. and Mexico is approximately 2,000 miles long. So 20 miles is 1%. Wow. So instead of having 5 million people cross in a year, you're going to have 4.95 million cross. Oh, okay. Yay. It's going to save a lot. And I know that's not accurate. I know because there's already border walls. So adding 20 miles is going to be more than 1% of open border that is that is uh, blocked off. But we need to have a wall along as much of the border as is reasonable, which is almost all of it. I guess there's some places where it's really difficult to cross so people don't cross there. We also make, need to make sure that we close all tunnels, find all tunnels, ship out, find and ship out all 
of the cartels in this country. They have to be removed. All of the illegals have to be removed from this country, period. They have, we have to find them all, remove them. That's it. That's the only interaction we should be having with countries south of the border is shipping their illegals that have come here and their citizens back. And uh, just pull out the consulates, too. You don't want to work with us in a respectful manner. We're not going to have anything to do with your countries. You want to go to war with us? Okay, fine. We're ready. Bring it on. Now, um, here is my example of a border wall that I have developed here in a 3D view. Um, now, I'm going to talk more about walls here in a moment besides just this right here. So what we have here is we have a trench on one side, which is 10 feet deep, a concrete lined, uh, and 10 feet wide. Uh, you come over across the trench. Now it's angled here on the bottom, as you can see. So that way it's harder to get for a ladder to get purchased on there. So the ladder would have to be even longer because it would have to slide back to the wall. And the wall, it would have to also sit at a specific angle because I added an extra little trench down here on the bottom at the very far wall on the on the Mexico side where this is like six feet or six, six inches wide so that the ladder could fall down in there and that it couldn't get the correct angle to prop itself up against the top of the wall. The wall itself is 20 feet tall. Razor wire down here with an overhang. So you, if you get through the razor wire, then you have to climb up this overhang, which is slanted on top. So it's hard to get a grip on slanted here. Um, and then the uh, you could put regolith rocks or even concrete inside of these metal pillars that uh, form the wall. And then there's razor wire on top of that, along with an overhang that you use two feet wide, or I think it's two or three. Let me see here. It's two. It's a, it's a little over two, almost two and a half, like two feet, four inches, two feet, five inches. So that's going to be hard if you can climb up here to reach over that because people do climb right up the bars on the, the uh, walls that we have now. And then there's spikes on the, on the uh, U.S. side. So if they jump down, they're likely to impale a foot or something on, on a spike. These spikes right here, the ones on the ground level, are three feet tall. So you're not going to accidentally step on that. You might fall on it, but no, don't go fall on it and stuff. And then these, uh, these uh, concrete bars here that are sticking up are approximately four feet tall with the spike on top. So almost six feet tall. So you're not going to cut this and then swing it open, and especially if it's filled with concrete or stone. You're not just going to cut through that bar and then swing it open like they do now and then get through. For whatever reason... The, ball, the wall has to be open so we can see. What I've been told is so we can see through it. And I'm like, why do we need to see through it? That doesn't make any sense. I'm going to explain to you why. It doesn't make any sense here in a moment. But I think this would be a pretty effective barrier to keeping out uh, illegals. And the thing is, is um, this would be very expensive. But hey, you know, sometimes you have to spend money to make money, right? Trump wanted $5 billion to build the wall. New York just spent $10 billion to house migrants. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and, and this stuff is so aggravating. Be and then um, if you have another, if you have an idea for a wall, contact me down in the comments. Send me an email. We can get together. I can make up your version of the border wall. I can do it here in 3D. This is all 3D. Let's turn on the, the wires here so you can see. So this is what it is kind of like here. So you can kind of get a better idea of what it looks like as far as the different angles and stuff. You could, the only thing I could see you doing is getting up some sort of bridge and then propping it across here and then uh, cutting through the bars. But if you fill that up with concrete or something, it's gonna be a lot harder to cut through. The only other thing you could do then is have a ladder going from all the way across here, but then you know make sure you have a good sturdy ladder because if, if it breaks and you fall down, that's not gonna be fun. And then of course, this is built up here so that it's not as easy to get the ladder purchase into the, the softer ground. And this is uh, two or three feet wide here. How wide is that? Three feet wide. Plus it's angled, so you can't just sit a sit a, a ladder on it and prop it up there; it'll fall off. So now I do want to talk about okay, seeing through the wall. Do we need to see through the? Why do we need to see through the wall? The only thing I can think of is actually that I've heard that the wall, if it um, can disrupt the migration of insects, because insects don't fly very high, so that might be why we need to have the wall open. Because we mastered the wall thousands of years ago. We don't need to see through the wall, as we see here with this very castle-like home here. This is a very good example of a wall. It's got battlements on it. You know, you would obviously make it taller. It'd have to be 30 or 40 feet tall. It'd be 10 feet, 20 feet thick even uh, with battlements. That way you can see over the wall. So seeing is not an issue. You see over the wall. You go up to the top of it and you look over. You have guard posts every, you know, 200 feet or something so that you can see. You can get up high enough that you can see. So if you don't want to have like a wall that you can walk across, then you can have guard towers instead. So the uh, battlement wall that we developed centuries ago is the wall that we need. We mastered walls a long time ago to keep people out. This is not something new. I don't know why we've forgotten this. Like I said, the only thing I think of is it would disrupt the migration of insects. And that might be an issue. 
an, an environmental disaster that we would want to avoid. But there's plenty of examples throughout history of how to build an effective wall to keep people out. And here we have an actual, you know, what looks like an actual castle. You know, there's battlements and everything. We're ready to go. And you got, you know, arrow slits, all that stuff, so that if you need to see through, you can have these little slits that are high enough up that people are not, they're narrow enough and high enough up that people are not going to get into them, get through them. You can also put bars on there so that people can't squeeze through them because you can see through the bars, of course. So this is not a... This is not something that we, we cannot do. We could easily do this. These are, these are all actionable steps that we could take. Anyway, that's all I got for this time. Thank you for watching, especially if you made it this far now. We're going to check out that awesome palate cleanser that I promised you.